What's up everyone? Thank you for tuning in. Today I'm going to be reviewing Xreal Beam, which is a companion device for Xreal Air. Let's dive into it. First thing first, let's address the elephant in the room. This company released Xreal Beam already has an adapter. So what's the difference and what's the benefit? This little guy uh, will help you to connect any Apple device or any HDMI device with a wired connection. So like Nintendo Switch, your iPhone, it will work with this. It, it has battery actually about the same with Xreal Beam, about three and a half hours, maybe up to four, depends how you're gonna use it. But the difference is, first difference is Right here, you only have one input. So this is where you're gonna plug in your glasses. And this is the other end, either for iPhone adapter or for HDMI. There's no other ability to plug in anything. Meaning, the battery dies, you have to unplug, you have to stop, you have to charge. Here, very first step that they did is added uh, two USB-Cs. So if you're using wireless connection, and the first, uh, USB-C you plug in your glasses and the second you can plug the charger and you can use this as you charge For most of the cases. I understand that's not really a big deal Like why do you need more than four hours of you know continuous viewing? But imagine the best case scenario where would you actually use glasses like this? It's entertainment which is you know uh, the biggest place it's lacking off is long trips. It's the back of your car, it's a airplane, it's a train, it's a public transportation. You put this on and you can enjoy your show or your game or whatever it is you want. So on a, on a long flights, I actually already tested this out. This is amazing. You do have a very nice screen in front of you. You can keep yourself entertained and it doesn't look weird or suspicious at all. Like I know right now a lot of companies jumping in into this uh, AR space, obviously Apple, one of the most recent announcements that they did, but I cannot imagine anyone wearing their devices in public. You just gonna look silly, I mean imagine someone with a Quest right now on their head on a plane, that's just, it's just ridiculous, nobody gonna do that and if they will, it's just crazy to me. With this device, it's completely discreet. So uh, in any public settings on a bus, you're not gonna feel weird, you know, you're not gonna look weird, it's gonna be completely fine and most importantly, you can still interact with the outside world, which is my second uh, point, what is the difference between those two? In one of my original videos where I reviewed Unreal Air, I uh, stated that it would be amazing and it's kind of critical for this device to be able to shift the video from a center to the side, to the corner. The point being, just like those scenarios I described to you right now, if you're in a public transportation, imagine you're in a plane, right? You're watching your video, you have those 100 inch screen in front of you, and then the food service comes. Yes, you can see the world kind of through the video, but that's the whole point of a video being pretty bright so that you can't really see much through it so that you can enjoy it, right? So if the video that bright, you cannot really interact with whatever is in front of you. So you forced to take off your glasses and for us uh, nerds who has prescription glasses, it means you have to remove your prescription lenses as well. And then you have to like squint and try to interact with people, not convenient. When it is shoved on the side, you still see your direct point of view. You still see what's going on in front of you and yet you can casually still enjoy whatever it is you're watching right on the side window. This solves this problem. When you're using this device, you it has three modes. One of which, two other modes, honestly, I don't see much of a difference. One of them is a smooth follow. It's basically the same what we have right now. It's just whenever you point, the screen follows you and it's a little bit smoother. Again, for those scenarios in the public transportation, you know, you're not really gliding, you know, in a perfect scenario. It's There is always a little bit of vibration exists. So the smooth follow will smooth those shakiness. So 
it will be a little bit more pleasant than just direct wires or wired connection to a device okay so that's first function second is where you basically just anchor uh, the screen so imagine like at home you have a screen in one place that's the same thing you just locate the screen where you want to see it in one place and then when you turn your head the screen stays there you don't see the screen which is also could be convenient in a scenario that i just described in an airplane you're sitting on your seat you're watching some videos some food service comes you turn your head to interact with someone you're not blocked by your own video your video stays there you're looking at some person you interact respond to them and go back to your video I could see that being useful but in my opinion if you do move a little bit more than that just one turn of a head the most important is the third option which is a side view you can uh, put it in any of the four corners whichever is more you know compelling to you whichever is more comfortable at the given point and this one is the one I use the most on this device this makes those glasses very usable on a daily type of use you can actually use it and walk you can use it while you know just communicating with others and kind of going on about your day now with that said I'm going to one next point about the hardware this has a very interesting very pretty fan like uh, insertion at the top the problem being this is actually a fan this is cooling system and when you charge it especially it does get fairly hot so my problem with this you plug in cables on one end so you only have one option to put it in your pocket is downwards like this so when it goes in your pocket it blocks the vent um i i don't know i don't know how well it's gonna work and how hot it's gonna get in your pocket so that's a problem it's definitely a problem from a hardware perspective i don't know how they're gonna solve it um let's see another very good uh, thing about the uh, hardware here is this looks like you know especially when you turn it around what does this look like to you to me that looks just like a power bank and very good news they thought about this i guess you can use it actually as a power bank so if you plug in where your glass is supposed to go in this usb-c that goes out you actually can charge your phone so again in a scenario that you're on a plane you can take this and even if you don't use it and you're in a pinch you can charge your phone it has uh, 48 milliamps um, 4800 milliamps battery so it, it's a pretty solid size you know you can definitely charge your phone uh, with that said I don't really think anybody will be buying this just as a uh, battery bank that's a little bit wasteful but yeah it otherwise it feels very solid I, I like the feel about it it doesn't feel squeaky it nothing feels you know loose nothing shakes it feels really nice overall quality big thumbs up except i would definitely change the clickiness of the buttons it definitely send you a good uh, audio signal when you actually press the button however i think it's a little bit too loud and if you're trying to you know use it at home like at night or something like where it's quiet and you want to stay quiet I, I could see how this could you know potentially not be a great thing um, on top also there is a button where is this vent there is a button to turn it on turn it off you see the bar lights up this bar is also your battery indicator so it goes down uh, you know when the battery uh, being used and um, the only problem with this is I don't really understand the point of the turn on button uh, because when you plug in the glasses it's turned on automatically when you plug it off the glasses it shuts up shuts down automatically so the button is kind of redundant but hey it's there also on the side uh plus minus buttons for the volume so that's nice like you don't need to if you're streaming from your phone for example you don't need to touch your phone you can control everything from here so that's nice now one of the biggest issues currently and opportunities for the future is their software because this is supposed to be a brain basically for the glasses which is supposed to be smart glasses right so as of right now when you plug it into your device you go there 
there's only there's nothing there there's only option to watch a tutorial basically you know how to plug in devices and that's it however there's a very interesting note at the bottom of your main screen which says more apps coming soon and this is i'm pretty sure exactly the truth because they do have a competition and some of this competition is called rocket also air you know you can see how they very very closely related i guess in that way uh in my opinion uh rocket look very 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 silly i would not without a smile on, on my face i would not be able to wear it in public that's for sure but they introduced exact same device also a companion to the smart glasses and that companion is android smart tv along the couple other things uh, it also supports few modes for the glasses and stuff but most importantly it has native apps which is i'm pretty sure this is where this guy going uh so i definitely envision youtube netflix you know all that type of sor sorts because remember it has its own wi-fi it has its own bluetooth it can connect to internet so it has everything you need to watch directly YouTube. So when you want to watch YouTube right now, it's kind of silly procedure. You have to plug this in to your uh, glasses and then you have to go to your phone, to find whatever video you need, start it, then start mirroring, and then it starts working. So there's a lot of steps in between which makes this device a little bit redundant because this exists again with this it's kind of right now for this scenario it's kind of sounds even easier you just plug it in and you go with this one you actually have to start it you know this mirroring and everything and the controls a little bit clunkier because when you mirror with this you can't actually switch to the next video for example you have no controls so you're only literally just viewing the screen when your video finish on YouTube you can't really do anything it just kicks you out or continues to the next one without you being able to do anything you are able to uh, go forward uh, within the actual video or backwards and pause that's it that's your controls so but you can totally see how it's not enough you need more ability of a freedom to choose what you want so if this will have and i hope it will uh native apps netflix youtube hulu whatever you know preferred popular uh application and it's natively can be operated from this now we're talking now that would be an amazing option for now it's just a, your mirroring device so keep that in mind uh, a lot of people saying rightfully so don't ever buy a product on their future promises or future software releases and i agree with this it's very risky so as of right now as of today this is your wireless mirroring device the only exception i would say for um functionality who would actually need it as of right now with a, their current software who would definitely benefit from this is nintendo switch users so the reason being as of right now you have to use hdmi um, in order to connect to this so you have to use that adapter and that adapter just doesn't play nice with this. You have to plug in HDMI cable, HDMI cable to adapter, adapter to glasses. So you're not really mobile at that point. You can't really walk or anything, that's for sure. That's first. Second, you cannot charge at the same time, not your switch, not the adapter. So it's, it's very limited. You can see how it's very limited. While with this device, you know, you have a lot more options and uh, again you can do this side view you can change the location of your screen there's a few more options and it's a little bit more ease of use for nintendo switch users important note uh side note but i seen quite a few people not understanding but nintendo switch Lite cannot work with this and it cannot work with any screen it just does not have the video output period so it's nothing to do with this device but nintendo switch Lite does not work with any smart glasses screens or anything keep that in mind with that being said this device cost 109 dollars i believe the latest uh, and uh, again keep in mind that even though 
software is definitely very early. I think they rushed this device to be first in the market because this Rocket Air, uh, also they announced it, but they did not release it yet. So it's only talks, you know. While these guys, they just wanted to be first in the market, which they did, as they did, you know, Apple not releasing anything all the way until next year. Uh, and here I am holding this device. As soon as they release the native applications for this, as soon as you're able to natively watch stuff here and interact with it, like YouTube, Netflix, I think that's a huge game changer and absolutely um, incredible device. As of right now, it's $109 um, external battery and a little bit of a convenience uh, addition to your smart glasses if you already have them and uh, definitely a huge benefit to um, Nintendo Switch users. If you, again, like to use it on the go, if you want to go on a plane, if you want to go on a train, and if you want to use your glasses there, I would definitely recommend this device. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I appreciate you enjoying all the way to the end. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did so, please, uh, you know, don't feel shy, press like button, comment, what would you do differently, what's maybe your personal uh, experience with any of those devices, maybe you have some recommendations, I'm very open to that as well. Thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll talk to you soon, bye-bye.